you for joining us at the ever-improving No Sound Bites Allowed podcast. My name is Michael Vasquez. We thank you for joining us in this adventure of describing the politics that go on in our nation on a personal and local level as often as possible, giving you, the audience, more than just 30 seconds to understand what's going on in our nation. We look forward to joining you as we go. Just sit back, enjoy the ride. Please remember, if you like the episodes, like it, share it, let other people know, and if you can, please donate, even if it's $2, even if it's 5 because it all makes a difference. We thank you, and here we go. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us at No Sound Bites Allowed, and you're listening to your host, the Dragon of the Southern Tier, that's Michael Voss. I'm always happy to have you with me. So I hope everyone's been well. And we have a couple of things to talk about today. And most importantly, I have a special guest in the audience with us in the studio. And that is our guest, Danny Kronz. Now, uh, Danny, we're going to go into some of the really fun things that that you've been working on and give you a chance to talk about all of them. And uh, let's first start off with, for the people who don't know you, uh, something about some of the things you've done. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Danny Krantz. I am a community involved person. I am working on three different not for profits at this time. In addition to my other jobs as well. Hmm. Okay. So you have three non profits that would be, I know one of them is the uh, Broome County Adopt a Park, which is something that I work with you on. And then there's also the uh, Second Chance Housing, and the third one is the... Creative Pioneer. Creative Pioneers, that's right. So it, that's a lot of nonprofits to be working on. Yeah, um, and they're all about building the community, whether it's building our parks and tourism, building housing and jobs and intervention for people who are in need, or building jobs for people who just have trouble getting jobs. We have a lot of marginalized workers in Broome County and the Southern Tier. And my mission is to make sure that we can give jobs to those people who right now don't have jobs. Well, that's a good reason. A good purpose and for any nonprofit, uh, especially the ones here in Southern Tier, because that's really needed. And I think everyone agrees with that. Uh, or at least you would think everyone would agree <laughs> with that. Uh, there are some who don't. Uh, let me, uh, speaking of, let's talk about some of those nonprofits. Uh, I know it's something that a lot of people have interest in. And uh, let's start with the first one Broom County Adopt a Park. We're both on that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a great organization. I enjoy being part of it. But tell us, how did you come about making that? Well, I got into Broom County Adopt a Park because I was working on a support group, which I still run, which is. It's a disability and family support group. We were discussing parks, and a friend of mine said she never went to the park. And I said, well, how could you never go to the park? She said, well, I'm in a wheelchair. I can't go to the park. There's nothing for me to do. So I said, well, we're going to get together, and we're going to fix that. I started working with the local legislator, which, which was Jason Garner at the time. We worked together, worked with the um, Broome County Health Department and the Parks and Recreations Department, wrote a proposal to open up a trust fund in the Broome County Parks for Wishes, which is there today. We've placed $15,000 in the Atsenango Park. We have about $6,000, which we'd like to put into the Dorchester Park, which will go towards musical instruments to help those who have sensory issues or who are blind. Um, it's all about, you know, making sure that everyone has a place in the park. And Mm -hmm. through doing this as well, I found out that the Broome County parks are drastically understaffed right now. They're skeleton staffed, which means there's nothing extra that we have. Uh, there's a great need for volunteers. So upon that, I also created adopt a park, which helps volunteers. I have hundreds of volunteers every year come in, go into the Broome County parks, help clean the parks. Uh, It's designed to also help college students. They can sign up for college credits. I've given hundreds of kids, you know, college credits through Broome Broome County and through Binghamton University. 
Um, yeah, uh, and it's really nice to be able to reach out and help the help our parks look better, get people involved, get people outside and doing something healthy and interactive. Um, and going yeah. from there, we kind of worked on creating more tourism into our parks because our parks are greatly underutilized. Oh yeah, absolutely. I know that uh, we worked on several projects in 2017, uh, and I was involved in several of them as well. Uh, which would be the movies in the park. I think that's mm-hmm. the thing that most people, it stood out for everyone. Yeah. Where we had a couple thousand people by the end of mm-hmm. the year that had been, and that's just counting the ones that we did. Yes. And then copycats came yes. in well, throughout and, the county. And, you know, uh, every other week this summer, all summer long, every Friday, families could get together and go to a free movie in our Broome County Parks and just enjoy being together and enjoy a good movie with the community. And I mean, you know, there's not many things out there now that are free to the community. And this is something that's really, really on the hearts of Adopt a Park is to make sure that there are free projects and free events for our community, especially for the low income residents that we have. Well, absolutely. And they're important. I mean, just like we saw with the Adopt a Park in 2017. We had hundreds mm-hmm. of families coming out to each and every event, mm-hmm. and it it showed there's that absolute need, and that's why even with the copycats, um, you know the zoo and uh, the baseball team, yeah. everyone there's an absolute need for some kind of family entertainment, mm-hmm. and it was great that we could inspire that. I I personally enjoyed it a lot because of that inspiration, and I know a lot of people appreciated it. Yeah, we had some really good movies. We had Minions, we had um, we had Lilo and Stitch, and just like some really good big box office movies that you know everybody enjoys watching. Absolutely, and it's it's great when you can have everybody happy about what you saw, uh, and that led into and this was across the county, mm-hmm. so it's not a city of Binghamton only event, but across all of Broome County. Mm-hmm. And uh, this year, we're looking at expanding it, as you mentioned, doing even more, uh, a couple more uh, locations and more movies and uh, a Mm -hmm. couple of other special features that are unique that no one's ever touched on. Yes. Uh, Besides the fact that no one had ever done movies in the parks before, we've got a couple of extra things adding to that. More surprises to come. Yeah. Nice bonuses, I Mm -hmm. like to call them. So, uh, but there's other things that Adopt a Park is doing. Um, go, there are a couple of things that you can you tell us what the new year in 2018 might entail? Uh, well, we will definitely be working to bring in more for the holidays. We're going to be working to bring in more for Halloween. We'd have a uh, Halloween parade, brought in a few hundred people actually had the costume party parade. Um, we're looking to bring in more with our pets to help pets, you know, help our dogs be able to get into the park. Um, we're also looking into hosting more holiday events for the winter as well. Oh, so all season long. It's not mm-hmm. just uh, not just the summer, but we're going to be doing everything throughout the entire year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know that it's a great thing because economically it's good for everybody brings in more tourism brings more people into the southern tier and that just helps everyone all the local businesses and as well as helping the family so i wanted to throw that in there Mm -hmm. Uh, but let's also talk a little bit about so there's the other uh programs um which Hmm. ones got the most going on um the uh southern tier second chance housing that is really starting to grow. It's um, started as just an idea for housing. Um, actually, the first meeting I had, it wasn't even about housing for inmates and people who were having trouble with drug addictions. It was actually housing for graduate students. No one came, but I had one man show up. And he said, you know, I'm an ex felon I'm trying to live a good life. I'm tired of living in a bad neighborhood where there's constantly drugs, there's constantly crime. He said, I just want to have a nice house and a nice community. And, you know, who doesn't deserve to have that? Who doesn't deserve to have a second chance? 
Well, and, that's an important thing to be able to have that opportunity to start over. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't get that. Yes, especially in Broome County. One of the things that people don't realize is when people get out of prison, they're not able to get jobs. And we already live in a neighborhood that's very hard for even those with masters and bachelors and PhDs to get jobs. Now, if you've been in prison, you already have a mark against you. Um, trying to get a job, what you're going to be pushed in is to temp jobs, which last about two to six months, and then you can go another year or two without work. Where does that lead our people who are ex-felons, our people who are recovering drug addicts? Where does that leave them? It leaves them to go back into the same system that they went through again. Uh, at some point, we have to break the chain. And what we're hoping to do is break the chain, because not only are we trying to build housing that is in good communities, that'll help develop and set up those who are struggling into better positions. We're also working to create jobs through second chance housing, through training, through working with the urban leagues, the TAIN labs, so that they can get certified through trades. And they're going to help with a with a trained team and with trained volunteers and with trained paid employees who will be helping them every step of the way to re re take back their life and to build their lives and to have a career and to ha own a home and to be decent human beings and feel like they are part of the community. Now, when, when I was looking into this a little bit, I, I noticed that there's, uh, this isn't a new idea. It's a template. There's, mm -hmm. It's part of partially being done already in uh, you're speaking about for those who are recovering from drugs, um, we have homes for uh, some of the disadvantaged youth mm -hmm. and for those who are recovering from drugs already existing mm -hmm. in Binghamton and Broome County uh, that a lot of people probably don't even know about mm -hmm. that are there uh, and already operating. And so is this model following that example? No, the homes that the people will be making with Second Chance Housing, uh, not only are we training the um, our most vulnerable to be able to be self-sustaining and make a living, we're also using those homes that we have to place them in the housing. And it's going to be assisted housing, whether they need a lot of assistance or maybe just somebody to come in and check on them. It will be assisted housing. Um and it will be permanent housing. I want to make sure that the people we have have lifelong caseworkers that will be working with them if they have any problems, if there's any need. They'll have somebody there, and they're going to have a support system as well through a series of volunteers. Okay. So that and would the homes have, and here's a question I've been asked about this before, are there going to be like signs or uh, some kind of identifier on where these homes are? No, no. I believe everyone deserves to have their own dignity. If you've done, if you've gone through our program, proved that you can be a homeowner, proved that you can work on site and help rebuild homes and keep that job afterwards to help other people have that, then they deserve to live in dignity and they deserve to not be, you know, pointed out. Okay. So you mentioned something interesting. So this is there's a selection process. So it's not just anybody can get this. Uh, there's a target group. You have to be willing to work. Second chance housing is a career. Once you're in, you will be part of a job. You will have to show up to work. You will have to put in your day's work just like everyone else. This is for people who really want to take their life back, and they don't want a free ride. They don't want a hand out. They want a hand up. Well, how's the reception been on this so far? Has there been community support? Um, are people interested in this so far? Well, um, people are. I've heard, I haven't really heard any complaints. I know that you've heard complaints, but I have not. Yeah, I hear so. complaints about everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is something that, you know, it's just, a, there's a need that needs to be filled. And if we can help people regain their lives, you know, I, I lived on Edward Street, lived on North Street. I've seen too many people walking around 
who have a past that can't get a job. They don't have anything to do except walk around. Let's get them off the streets. Let's give them a job. Let's give them a good house to live in. Let's give them a future. Let's give them an opportunity. Yeah. For people who don't know uh, the Binghamton area, when you're talking about Edwards Street, you're talking about North Street, you're talking about Mather, uh, those areas, that's one area that's considered a lower income area and uh, somewhat troubled. Mm -hmm. uh, not as horrendous as perhaps 20, 30 years ago where it was a little more uh, Wild West to an extent. Uh, but nowadays it's, it, it's not nearly as bad as the rumors, like most things. The rumor mm -hmm. is always worse than the reality. Yeah. But yet it is an area where you have a larger mm -hmm. population of lower income. Uh, I know I've heard that there is interest from various levels of government and organizations mm -hmm. on this already. Um, and it's still in an early stage, right? Yes, yes. Um, we're still working on getting our registration. As soon as the registration comes back from the state, we will be moving forward to get grants going. We have Senator Ashkar, who's interested. We have uh, Congresswoman Claudia Tenney, who's interested. We have Rich David, who is the Binghamton mayor, who's interested. Um, this is something that can really help lift up our community. It can take down crime. It can raise up property value. And it can bring more tax revenue into our community just through that. And we'll be changing people's lives. Well, it's a nice combination of things. Mm -hmm. Everyone likes to see more, more income coming in, more mm -hmm. revenue for the city to be able to use. And everyone likes a nice stable environment. Mm-hmm. And, you know, cutting down crime. These are all things I don't know many people who are against, mm -hmm. <laughs> as far as I know. Uh, no one's yeah. told me, oh, I'm for greater crime or anything. So mm -hmm. I, I can see that how this could be very interesting, very attractive to a yeah. lot of people. Well, there's $2.5 billion available for housing, for assisted housing. I'm saying that we just use some of that for Binghamton. We need it. We have a lot of aged housing. We have a lot of places that are going vacant each each month. Let's take these homes. Let's put them back on the tax roll. Let's get them built. Let's build up our community, build up our people. And that's one of the proposals of mm -hmm. the Second Chance Housing, as I know, is to actually go into not someone's home and take it away from them, but rather one of the vacant homes. Mm -hmm. That the city has or the county yeah, has. For, for closed homes, as they're for closing, we'll be working, you know, if the, you know, one Binghamton is working with the foreclosed homes, but mm -hmm. if they can't save the home, then we're asking for help just to get them in. We're, like I say, we're training the people to have careers. We're training them to have trades. Like That's carpentry, carpentry, plumbing, electricity. electricity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And fix up the home. Yes, to fix up the home. Mm -hmm. And... Like I say, this will be their jobs. This is their career. And imagine how many people that we can hire. Imagine how many homes that we could fix in Binghamton. And, you know, a lot of the times people end up back in jail just because there's no opportunity. There's no jobs. There's nothing for them. Let's take that away. Let's mm -hmm. add jobs. Let's add opportunities. It's a new approach to it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, well, let's also... While we have this segment going, I do want to talk about the third uh, nonprofit, uh, and this one I don't know a lot about. Yes, it's so. uh, Creative Pioneers. It's twofold. Uh, the first part is getting donations from, you know, like say it's used stores, secondhand stores, things that they don't want are donations from the community. We'll take, you know, I had a donation of cloth we have several donations of different crafting things and using them and you know maybe making apparel making homewares and different things that you know we can sell and again the target population that I'm trying to help are the people who are have barriers for work whether it's immigrants who come in and they might not speak English but they have trade skills or people who are getting out of prison, people who are getting out of uh, recovery places where they can come in, learn a skill, and become a professional at 
that skill and be able to support themselves and their families to sell these. Um, so there's a little bit of dovetailing here. I hear, like with the second chance housing, when looking at this, you're looking at a target group of people who uh, some might call disenfranchised mm -hmm. or uh, challenged to get those opportunities, have those work skills, mm -hmm. and it gives them that opportunity, and it's creating. Uh, but what does it actually create? What are you looking to make? We're creating uh, apparel, handbags. Um, I'd like to get some trade workers in who I work with the American Civic Association. They're partners in this. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking into maybe finding ways for them to repair furniture. And, you know, even looking down into getting local artists to paint some of the furniture for us and selling it and putting Binghamton on the maps as, like, new art hub for selling furniture and, you know, sell it statewide, sell it nationalwide. So there's a couple of applications mm -hmm. here. Um, so there's an art application to mm -hmm. it. There's the crafts work of uh, carpentry and mm -hmm. uh, clothing making. So there's a few different things to yes. that. Yeah. And you already have the American Civic Association. Yes, we're already partnered with the American Civic Association. I am looking into partnering with... Um, maybe achieve as well just to help get our our disabled to give them job opportunities as well because i think you know there's a lot of traits that our disabled community can do as well and there's also a second tier to this oh, which second? yes which is something i'm looking into right now i might have a possible location um and that is recycling uh getting plastics getting styrofoam and putting it through machinery that will pretty much shrink and condense it and it takes the styrofoam and turns it into the garden bricks that you see at like Lowe's and Home Depot and we can sell those that's a tangible thing that we can sell from recycled goods and with the plastics we can take them shrink them condense them and make building blocks just like the ones they have that are the concrete building blocks, except we'd be making them with plastic, and they're just as strong. And we would be taking care of recycling. We'd be offering jobs. We'd be able to manufacture, distribute, sell. Manufacturing in yes. New York State. Now, there's something you don't hear a whole lot about. Yeah, and it would be recycling. That's, that's interesting. And I really think that's something that could put Binghamton on the maps, you know. And, you know, like I say, we can... One, we will need trained trained staff. It would open up job opportunities to a lot of people who are underskilled, who don't have the ability. They don't. They might be underskilled. They might not have the education that they need. We have a lot of factory workers that are misplaced after IBM. We they don't have a job. You know what? These would be perfect people to bring in and take leadership roles in the, in this factory. Okay. Well. This is an interesting project, and, it'll, and that one's also in a development stage at this mm -hmm. moment. Okay. So there's a lot of work that's being done on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I do want to ask you a couple of questions uh, in a different aspect of your life, but what we'll do is we're going to take a break. Okay. Uh, but in terms of all the nonprofits, let me ask you, if people wanted to get in touch with you uh, about any of the organizations, the nonprofits, how would they reach those nonprofits? I mean, the adopt -a park obviously, people can reach me directly, uh, and I'll be able to speak with that. Uh, so that's one. Mm -hmm. But the other, uh, Second Chance Housing, and the others. Creative Pioneers. Creative Pioneers. I always forget that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the new one, so it takes a little while to yeah. remember. So it's Creative Pioneers. Um, how would people be able to contact you about that? You can contact me, either send me a text, or if you call, please leave a message, and it's 607-201-7887 or you can reach me at my email d-a-c-r-o-n-c-e-s -E it's dacronces at hotmail.com okay and that'll give people a way to find out more information about these the nonprofits, the organizations to help in, in all those aspects and they'll be able to reach you that way okay then what we'll do right now as we want to take a quick break because we went a little over time. Uh, we usually go to about 15 minutes, but I think this was really important to get it all at once. But we'll take a quick break and then we'll come back and we have some other questions we'll talk about 
um, some of the other things that are going on in Binghamton and Broome County that I think uh, I'll be really interested. So I thank everyone for listening in. Come right back. We've got about two minutes, and then we're going to pick up where we leave off. Hello, everyone. This is Michael Voss, your host here at No Sound Bites Allowed. I hope you've enjoyed our episode here with Danny Kronz speaking about the nonprofits in Binghamton and Broome County and how it can help so many people in our community. Because of the importance of this subject, we're just going to be publishing this segment just by itself, so it's its own little episode. If you wish to hear us continue our conversation with Danny Kronz about some of the politics and other things that are going on to help our community, we do invite you to come back to No Sound Bites Allowed, continuing the conversation from this point. With that, I hope you enjoy the rest of the music here. And we look forward to you coming back to No Sound Bites Allowed with Danny Kronz and the future to help our community. We thank you. 